despite that, uh, thanks, Jagar. If I to I think there's a poor connection, but I'll start uh, now. Uh, Nafida, can you, can you start? Sir, just one minute. Okay. So I'll wait just one minute um, to become live in Facebook, then we'll start. I think, well, thank you so much. Um, I know you're driving, but you still, you'll join. And uh, we are very happy still you join with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir, you may start. Good afternoon, US, and uh, good night in Bangladesh. Today, we'll talk about the uh, AI. Uh, it's a very exciting topic. Uh, a lot of applications in each area is our part of life um, now. Uh, each day, the life is impossible now without um, AI or artificial intelligence. So we'll talk about more in medical field, how it helps us uh, to make the diagnosis and improvement of the patient care and overall day-to-day um, -day, uh, medicine uh, practice. So let's get some idea of what is artificial intelligence or AI. So, so by definition, Artificial intelligence refer to the ability of a computer to perform a task associated with intelligence being, including cognitive functions that might mimic the human mind, such as the ability to learn. So most importantly here, the we have to remember the intelligence being like human being, but not exactly. So it is uh, very exciting nowadays, but the concept actually is very old. Uh, if we recall uh, Aristotle study of logic, uh, there is some idea, some similarity. And uh, in modern era, there is a lot of work done by a British uh, computer pioneer. His name is uh, Alan Tuning in 1935. So uh, it's a simple word we can say that this is a powerful extension of the human uh, intellect. So it involves all aspects of the life, AI-based uh, uh, virtual assistants, like uh, everybody knows that, Siri, Google Assistant, and the Alexa. I don't want to mention that. I'll spend more time uh, with uh, medical application. Even in the uh, healthcare industry, every day we dictate uh, with the dragon, which is actually AI powered, as you know. So uh, this, those are the word uh, every day we see, once we read the literature, we see that uh, artificial intelligence, AI, um, machine learning, deep learning, those are the topics. Uh, it's better to familiar, although this is not our field, but if we have a new equipment, then the manufacturer will talk about that. So let's get at least some idea, like what is the machine learning? So this is the area of computer science whereby a system can develop the ability to learn with data. So for example, uh, it will give you some uh, prediction about the colorectal cancer. Uh, it's kind of uh, algorithm, this is the model. Uh, those are the uh, things we can get with the machine uh, learning. So uh, obviously it's a computer-based program. So what is deep learning? Deep learning 
is also uh, it is a part of the machine learning uh, algorithm uh, uses layer of nonlinear processing for a feature of extraction. So here, for example, if any uh, clinician or hepatologist want to make a model to diagnosis of um, alcoholic liver cirrhosis, and obviously his precision will be to make the diagnosis of the alcoholic cirrhosis and using the lab test like AST and ALT. So our other one, make it simple. Now, once we take the history, we go by detail, then we kind of extract, we make it simple. So that uh, and a, a good example of deep learning. So here we can see that improvement uh, over the 50 years. Uh, beginning, it was a big uh, digital computer, 1940. And the first uh, computer came in the market in 1950 by IBM. That was a so big, it's size of a refrigerator and a very heavy. Uh, and still, it was only five megabyte. So you can imagine how fast nowadays, how small, how handy everybody's uh, in pocket. Next. Okay, so we'll uh, talk about more um, application in, in medicine, uh, how, we can use, how we can use that. So you can see uh, simple, uh, mostly order all over the world, like EKG, uh, white cell count, uh, analysis of the retinal photograph and the cutaneous lesion. Uh, those are uh, AI powered image processing. I'll spend some time with a couple of slides about the image processing. And we also have uh, Dr. Roman today, and then uh, we'll get his input as well. So identify a breakout of infectious disease, clinical, genetic, and many other laboratory report. So also aiding in hospital business operation. Uh, especially with the uh, big corporate system that very, very helpful. So I'll go over with each area in the next slide. So also everybody familiar with the uh, chatbot. Uh, it was actually developed a long time ago, 1964 and 1966 in MIT, but it was not that popular that time. Nowadays, everybody knows that uh, chat GPT, uh, it is very popular nowadays, especially uh, with the regular people, they try to chat with uh, any topics, any subject, especially the, the, if they're interested to know about the medical issues, they have medical issues, they want to know about the medicine, they want to know about the medical condition, they go use this. So I'm giving you an example here. So with the advantage and limitation with the chat GPT-4. So you can, uh, for example, somebody asking, uh, what is metformin? So it answered uh, with this uh, chat, uh, it is a prescription medication used to control the blood sugar. So next question, can anyone with type two take it? So answer is not necessarily because you have to see it is a good for you, make sure your kidney function is okay. So next question, what other option are there? So uh, the answer is numer numerous. Um, medication, which is true. So up to here, simple conversation is okay. But once you go more deeper, complex, then it is impossible to communicate. You can see that the uh, one person who has communicated, he was asking that all seems complicated. I don't know what is right for me. So because you already opened the discussion here, that is not good for everybody, that is a problem, make sure your kidney function is okay. So here is the limitations. And then uh, there is another funny question, how did you learn so much about metformin? So this is a machine, this is a uh, computer, uh, it, it cannot be human being and cannot achieve any degree uh, in medical science. So those are the limitations. All the beginning, it was um, very uh, informative, uh, sound like uh, it's giving all kind of answer, but at the end, it's not really. So I'll talk uh, more about the uh, imaging analysis, how it helps us, uh, especially for the radiology, it's very, very helpful. You can see the picture here. It is a growing adaptation of the AI application in radiology in uh, recent year. So how, how it worked, you can see picture. It analyzed the images 
uh, how nicely you can see that there's a right-sided pneumothorax. So this is a simple radiological picture. So with the now, with the help of the AI, now it marks it very nicely, very helpful. Okay, so in the second image, you can see left of a low uh, solid nodule. Uh, it's missing in fear picture, but it, it was so simple picture here. And then uh, it was marked with the red area uh, in, in the next slide. So here also you can see the uh, small uh, lesion in the breast. Again, uh, it was marked uh, very nicely, uh, precise uh, border as well. So what is next? So uh, the AI uh, want to further development. So they're trying to write a complete report, uh, which is the next. It's called uh, general, generalist medical AI model designed to com provide complete radi radiological report. Uh, which is derived from the image, test result, clinical information, and the previous history. So you can see that they want to write the complete report. So that means it is a, a very good news for the current radiologist, but um, future radiologists may be not a good news because the machine will read complete report, although it needs to be checked by uh, expert. So what is the utility in infectious disease surveillance? So we know that with the uh, help of the AI, uh, it will give early warning of the outbreak of the infection and pathogen classification, even it will tell us, risk assessment, source identification, and what is the hottest spot. Also, they will give some, uh, some clues. So these are the very, very important in terms of uh, public health um, standpoint, especially in, in COVID era, it was extremely, extremely important to get those information. So more application here uh, with uh, AI for infectious disease surveillance. So here is telling you exactly how many cases, which area, uh, the pathogen name, location, so that's very, very important uh, to make the uh, better plan, especially uh, any disease like uh, COVID-19. So here's a more helpful tools uh, with the AI. So you can have a mobile application to measure antibiotic susceptibility. You can see how, how cool it is. So in the, in the computer, uh, in the iPhone, you can take the picture and then it will show everything, every aspect and, and tell you what antibiotic will, will be susceptible. So more information uh, in infectious disease with the help of AI, uh, border surveillance for infectious disease, like any kind of uh, uh, contagious disease or COVID-19, the which area, which border of the country uh, should be more uh, surveillance and uh, people need to be checked in which area. So those are the information we can get from uh, with the help of the AI. So even more application here, uh, A2 diagnosis, rare genetic disease uh, in uh, molecular biology, you can see that. I'm not spending more time here. So after that, what is the benefit here? If we know that AI is helping uh, to make the diagnosis for better uh, management, so here is the difference you can see. We, we know already guideline. So guideline is kind of, uh, generalize so one size fit for everybody so that's the conception of the guideline but once you have uh, ai then what we can do that it will be a personalization of medicine um, versus just guideline so you can see there uh, so those are the generalized guideline uh, for everybody but 
uh, everybody is different. The approach uh, needs to be individualized at individualized some point. So you can see this person need this and, and meet criteria here. The other person, he needs the treatment one or treatment three or treatment two. So it's kind of patient specific algorithm we can, we can help with the aid of uh, AI. So there's a lot of uh, medic medical device. Oh, we all familiar with that. I don't, I don't want to spend too much of time with that. Uh, you can see that uh, special stethoscope, MARB analysis, all are available nowadays. So there is an article just published last week in Guardian uh, with the use of the AI in breast cancer screening as good, they, met, they did the randomized trial involving more than 80,000 uh, women. So uh, they found that it is as good as two radiologists. So the original article from Lancet Oncology Journal. So they found uh, the study done in Sweden, uh, they found it is safe. It decreased the workload by half of the radiologist uh, uh, AI screening as good as two radiologists uh, working together, AI supported screening uh, positive, 28% was cancer and standard screening 25% of the cancer. So that means AI can detect more cancer than uh, standard screening. So obviously uh, the better result uh, combining expert with AI. So I'll spend more time on uh, AI application in gastroenterology. So this is a common scenario we see every time. We see a lot of patients, they have uh, uh, bowel uh, issues, change of bowel habit, irritable bowel syndrome. And then if we ask about the bowel habit, it's kind of subjective. Everywhere is different. Everywhere description is different. So uh, to avoid those uh, disparity, we can use actually AI powered uh, app to see exactly what is the uh, change of bowel here, what is the consistency, how it look like, and then helpful uh, to make the better uh, prognosis and the treatment plan. So here's a very interesting uh, study actually. Uh, it is very recently published. Um, American College of uh, and Journal of Gastroenterology. So we know that liver cirrhosis is associated with cardiac dysfunction and distinct uh, EKG abnormalities. So we know this is uh, one of the uh, deadly disease all over the world, uh, 2 million deaths per year. And AI model using uh, CNN, convolutional neural network, to differentiate between the EKG from patient with and without uh, liver cirrhosis with excellent uh, efficacy. So you can see that 84.9% uh, sensitivity and 83.2% specificity. So here you can see the study originally done in Mayo Clinic. Uh, there are three uh, places that have a big hospital. This is a tertiary care center in the US. So is they use that to diagnose and the assess the severity of the um, end stage liver disease. So what they found here, you can see it's called uh, AI uh, cirrhosis, ECG, uh, the ACE score, uh, what they found along QT interval due to sympathetic activities, uh, as we all know that uh, cirrhotic patients, they have more uh, sympathetic activity due to uh, splenic uh, vasodilation, decreased QRS um, voltage, RR interval variation, and the short TPTE. So what is the current tools we use to uh, diagnose the diagnosis and the assess severity of the liver disease. You all know that we use fibroscan, uh, transient elastography, MELD score, hepatitis C fibrosure, have a fibrosis uh, index, and then also some other uh, 
uh, scoring system we have, uh, although it's not used often, uh, obviously lab result is helpful tool, imaging CT MRI in the US and the biopsy is a uh, gold standard, although, but uh, nowadays everybody try to avoid, is rarely used to make the diagnosis. So what was found with these uh, interesting studies, you can see that. So this is the EKG, which was uh, converted or analyzed in the computer with the convolutional uh, neural network architecture. So the patient, was, there was 5,212 patients with liver cirrhosis. And then here's the non-liver cirrhotic patient with age and sex matched control. And you can see that area under the curve and is an excellent performance with this test. And this curve, you can see that ACE score was positively associated with marker of liver disease severity, including MALIS score. So it's perfectly match up with the current uh, tool that we use, which is MAL sodium score. And then you can see, so this was before liver transplant. Once patient have liver transplant, you can see everything actually dropped here. The SE score dropped as well as MAL score dropped. So is excellent correlation. So here you can see that uh, these are the patient actually uh, was uh, waiting for liver transplant, and then uh, patient has uh, liver cirrhosis. They exclude the patient who had a liver cirrhosis, um, who had liver transplant, but non-liver cirrhosis reason. So again, the, the uh, excellent correlation, you can see that. So here's a brief. So we can, as we mentioned that, uh, patient has EKG, so uh, due to circulatory changes and cardiac dysfunction, we can see there's a lot of distinct EKG changes uh, in patient with uh, liver cirrhosis. So we, here they, ha they have EKG, then it goes by computer-based analysis, and then this is the final graph. So uh, this is a study done in tertiary center, but there is some uh, limitations as well as you see that more data needed before AC score can be applied to clinical practice. So, so far, uh, you can see what are the advantage of this score. We, we know the disease severity as determined by the uh, MALD score. Uh, it should be actually MALD sodium score and lab marker. Determine the time of uh, transplant evaluation, when this patient should go for transplant evaluation. And also we can assess pre and post liver transplant disease activity with this score. So again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, a huge uh, promise with the using of the uh, AI. Uh, it helps supporting uh, decision making uh, a, a human AI combination may be ideal. Uh, of course, uh, you still need human control. Uh, there should be a flexibility and uh, moral judgment as well. So the other limitation here, as, as we know that this is a computer based, so there can be a limitation uh, there can be a built-in bias. There are uh, also involvement of the financial uh, interest that leads to conflict of interest. Uh, of course, uh, there is the ethical and moral issue. Now, however, we can we can control or we can eliminate a lot of the things with the regulatory consideration, uh, with the rules and regulation uh, by the uh, by the agency, by the local administration uh, governance. So now I'll open for discussion. And also we have a question at the end and whoever will win, uh, we have a prize today. So I'll ask uh, Dr. Rahman to give his uh, input. He's one of the top researchers in the US um, in, in AI. 
this is his area of interest. So thank you, um, um, Koshal Bhai, <clears throat> for for doing this nice nice presentation in AI in medicine. And um, so AI, AI that you know AI is coming. AI is growing. It is in infancy. Always I say that it is in infancy, and and a, a lot of you know when you a new technology comes in, we are scared or maybe we think that AI is gonna take over us, or maybe we think that AI is gonna do a lot of uh, good things for us, and maybe we don't need to work at all, or something like a lot of uh, uncertainty in front of us. My opinion about AI is it depends on the operator, who is using it, and it will never be allowed to take over us. That is for sure, in medicine mainly because we have all this regulation and from the hospital, from the regulatory FDA, um, you know, FDA, and they have a whole segment they call SAMD, software as a medical device. So everything is regulated. So what we can do, how can we use it more for to help us? That is our goal, number one. So here in GI, though the presentations on GI definitely, you know, from Epic search now nowadays, for example, I'm giving a little example that I'm working on right now. For example, you are doing your evening shift and you are an attending in a busy tertiary level hospital. You job, you are an you are a hospitalist or a GI consultant, and ED physician called you. A patient came in with 72 years old, have been uh, hematochesia, and maybe as well as there is an, um, a hemoptise, uh, hemoptise uh, sorry, vomiting in the blood, vomiting out blood. Now you want to, uh, he wants to admit the patient. Now you are the, have the, you have to decide whether the patient is admissible or not. I know that this phone call uh, comes to you a lot. So in fact, what you are using, what you're going to do as a consultant, what do you do? You open the patient chart and you follow certain criteria. They call, I call it admissible criteria. And maybe, maybe you look at the hemoglobin level, maybe you look at the other criteria, how much volume uh, he lost or something, or maybe some sodium level or something. So then you make your decision and you tell the ED physician, okay, please admit the patient under me. AI can replace whole thing. And is gonna ED physician just with your dictaphone give the that five or six sentences, and AI will tell you patient admissible because the criteria will be set by you, and is gonna run through the database and is gonna say it is admissible. So I am I'm working on this one right now. So this way, this way AI can help you, and to to save you time. Maybe you can see. You can write, like, you know, you can focus on seeing patient more and all this. Now, I saw that this is the epic search, like, you know, uh, history search they can do. Then same thing for lab search. It can run five years of data and see where then some numbers are, you know, derangement and it can, and you know, come up to it. So then it can help you in reaching to a diagnosis. Um, maybe you are debating between three differential top diagnosis. Maybe all in a sudden you saw that patients has a, uh, like for example here, EKG is always there is an P with, um, uh, there is an S2 of inversion or something so that you as a, as a GI physician, you, you probably didn't get a chance to look at it, but so it adds additional, it can help you that will work with you as an intern so that it will, uh, it will predict, but you will have the, opportunity to choose whether to accept it or to deny it. I call, so that is always you will have the opportunity. Then finally, the radiology imaging, definitely we have a lot of work is going on. And this uh, radiology uh, that, you know, they, you, you mainly you give them a, in a data set, it runs it, it gives a prediction. And then after that compiling everything and to a final diagnosis, maybe it can help you in your drag and switch that when you, when you uh, do the, uh, like, you know, writing a report or dictating a report for a patient, it can 
uh, like, you know, pull out, uh, like create a template for you. You can just change here and there and sign it. So those are the AI and definitely AI is booming and it needs a lot of work to be done and all clinicians need to be involved. And also a lot of financial, um, because, you know, those are also uh, finances, uh, you know, it is costly to develop a model. It is costly because you have to pay the uh, developer, you have to pay the for the for the data processing. So a lot of um, cost also involved. Anyways, it's a very good presentation. Um, Dr. Raman, question to you. Uh, so you are doing this study, and I know you have a lot of work. Uh, you are top uh, researcher in the country. So <laughs> not uh, top researcher. I'm one a, of them. <laughs> is it a possibility that, like from uh, from Bangladesh? the Ashad Bhai can do same way and because he has to be practical like he had to set all the criteria uh, depending on the local resource expertise and uh, so that he can set up his criteria locally yes instead of uh, following following the like a big company or whoever offering uh, those in the AI so it can be so local so all, all of you probably know, and um, you know, last last in our CMCNA meeting, I mentioned I gave you a glimpse of my current research now. So yes, it is possible. Uh, AI uh, traditionally, it was controlled by big companies because you know they have the money, they can they can do whatever they want. If they need hundred programmers to sit down, create something, they can create maybe in one week. Right, but now, you know, small scale, even an individual researcher can create, right? And mm -hmm. so there are two options. You can mainly, uh, I am, I am willing to this, you know, multinational or, or call it uh, collaboration, that you are a researcher from Bangladesh and you are interested in a study. First of all, then uh, by collaboration. Uh, that we can create data set. First is, you know, first thing is you have to create a data set. That is the first step of, of AI research, what you are trying to do. Then second step is that, uh, you know, that um, data uh, analysis and also the algorithm development, and then you run it. You run it among the, you know, all this um, uh, network. That is an, um, I, I, you know, as you they have an Amazon web service they have. Those are expensive. So to bypass that, what I created, I created my own computer system. That is, that is, that is also just to bypass, not to pay them. So I call it my AI lab has the capacity to run the data, any source of data that we can run it and we can analyze it. So then it can give you the prediction. If you don't like it, that prediction, then you can go back to your model, change your uh, algorithm, and then rerun it. AI is like a you know, um, trial and error, which model is best fit your research, and then continuously improve it. And another thing I found it, uh, that is in fact, um, uh, you know, I saw it last year. In our hospital, uh, you know that I'm working on brain mass detection. I tried all, uh, we have 11 magnets in our hospital. So all of my data was from four, four uh, magnets, and those are from mainly from GE and one Siemens. So we were running, we saw the good result, and all of a sudden one regional hospital has a very old magnet, and which is not GE or uh, maybe the previous version of GE, not the updated version. And when I ran the data from that hospital, I found that my prediction was poor. So that, in fact, after that, we had a meeting in the Pakistan, uh, 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 one uh, researcher, uh, she said that she found the same problem. So the variation, I think multinational uh, collaboration will help AI to grow because data set is different. So yes, it is possible. It is possible if he wants to uh, interested in a study, we can talk about it later and then, um, Absolutely. Okay. I think Ashad Bhai, Ashad Bhai join with us. Uh, Ashad Bhai. Um, can I talk, uh, Ashad? Gee, yes, absolutely. Yes. You know, uh, 
first of all, thank you for a great presentation. And uh, Dr. Rahman, though I didn't meet you personally, uh -huh. but uh, very nice to know you and very nice uh, uh, discussion. Um, it's, um, it's, it's so much to learn. Um, in, as you say that uh, AI, uh, a, a lot of things are important to how much data you're gonna put and what situations the data in it put in and how you analyze the data. And he gave a very, you gave a very unique example that where you are putting data uh, from two different or four different machines and how the interpretation can be differ from a, all sets of magnets where they gather the data in a different way. So uh, the same way, you know, uh, we are also for a few years ago, we started working with two different companies for ga ga gather the data for colon polyps when we do colonoscopy. Um, mm -hmm. to, to do a colon colonoscopy, we, 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 we try to um, diagnose colon polyps. And sometimes uh, it varies from person to person. There is a small risk that you can miss the polyps. And sometimes you can overread the polyps because sometimes the bubbles or little mucosal uh, elevation can read as a polyps. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of data interpretation, data reading. So, and it becomes a model now that uh, AI in the colonoscopy can be incorporated and it's being incorporated right now. So it's, 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 it, it needs a thousand and thousand patients data to put in right interpretation analysis and a lot of work. And right now we have a colorectal surgeons and he is doing a research, but he's doing in collaboration with uh, colorectal surgeons in India and uh, South Korea. And the, the collaboration is happening uh, in the perspective of a procedure called TAMIS, which is transanal mucosal resection for uh, you know, rectal cancer or rectal lesion when they do it with the robot and they do it a single port through the anal canal. And uh, so the detecting the lesion, the length of the lesion and how uh, you use it uh, as a, a robot system. So when you transcribe this data from one robotic system to the another robotic systems, there's a lot of variation as you just mentioned. So I think we are, in a huge uh, space, which is a lot not known to us, and also uh, a lot of work needed, but there's a tremendous improvement. So for example, in Bangladesh, where not everywhere robot is available, I think not available at all right now, but there is a possibility that minimally invasive robotic surgery can be possible. Uh, data from India probably will be very much helpful to put a, robot right somewhere in, in Bangladesh and uh, the surgeons over here can help at the same time detection of the data and the, and, the, and the machine itself can help. So a lot of variable and a lot of works and a lot of global work I think need to be done. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to uh, meet Dr. Rahman. I'm thankful Dr. Koshet to bring him. Um, so uh, we can use his uh, is one of the early pioneers as a physician in the field of radiology where there's a tremendous load of, I mean, uh, tremendous opportunity for AI globally uh, because it's data interpretation of images. So I think that can, that is one area where a physician in Bangladesh can incorporate. And I just wanted to tell Dr. Rahman um, one thing that Planetary Health Academia is a platform for the physician just like us who wanted to work globally, um, wanted to transfer the technology. Uh, right now we are work mainly in Bangladesh, but we also start working in Nepal, uh, starting some work in, in, in Africa and also in, uh, in Central Asia, Uzbekistan, uh, we start collaborating them. So uh, I'd be very, uh, very happy if you would like to um, uh, come in in our, in our platform and uh, maybe uh, incorporate with the radiologist in Bangladesh with your field as well. Um, I would thank like you, to thank you all. Uh, thank you, I think, but though, though I missed you during our CMC NA, um, con uh, our, our conf uh, conference in May, and uh, that, um, you know, all of our CMC and 
uh, we came and I, I met a lot of lot of CMC alumni because it was a very very a fun fun moment for me and you know I enjoyed it a lot and definitely thank you for inviting me to PHA yes definitely I would like to be involved and I agree that you know collaboration and I I have seen uh, Ashad Bhai for <laughs> I see his face I remember he was our CA when I was interned there at uh, uh, CMC so. Uh, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. So, you know, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, like, you know, I'm, I'm really happy and glad that, you, you know, see all of you guys doing a lot of good things and collaboration definitely possible. And mainly is the, I think, uh, well, maybe we can have another meeting another time just to choose one topic that you are interested to work on. And then we can do, um, we can do, like, if you are interested in to work in AI, but well, that's just one topic. You started one thing that you are interested in. Maybe it looks like you are interested in GI. And, and then we can create an algorithm and, and collaboration with uh, from Bangladesh. And, and you said that you have some collaboration with India. We can come up with something and then we can run it and we can see how it goes. And, and um, let's see, um, we'll, we'll find out. I think I, I totally agree. So uh, I think in future we can uh, do that uh, with the Planetary Health Academia. Just target one, like uh, what is the triaging in the ER? Uh, at least one algorithm we can double off uh, with this uh, study. Uh, I think we can target one and we can work with Dr. Raman as well. At least one, like a triaging of GI breeding in Bangladesh, Chiang Medical College. Absolutely, in, in Bangladesh. absolutely no. Um, uh, the, one of the reasons why- We cannot do all, but why, at least some. No, you're absolutely right. And you know that's the reason Dr. Professor uh, you know, uh, Irshad is very supportive and he's interested with the new ideas. And I, you, you did read my mind. And, and unfortunately, all three of us from Chittagong Medical College, our alma mater, and uh, maybe we can start uh, doing something in Chittagong Medical College AI in Bangladesh to start work with. I think it's a great idea. I think we can have um, individual meetings uh, together and you know, in the emergency room. I think it will be great work. I mean, you know, there's a lot of, lot of scope to start doing some research in Bangladesh. They are eager to do it. A lot of um, focus now to do more research and. If we can incorporate something in a smaller scale, in emergency, as you said, that the GI bleeding algorithm development with AI and um, uh, Irshad is there to help us and uh, we'll hear from him as well. Thank you. Okay, so then we'll go to the question. Uh, I think we have one more request, maybe in our global uh, conference in Bangladesh in February, we can, we can get uh, Dr. Raman and use his expertise and uh, do a session uh, in February next year. Absolutely. Absolutely. With him, I'll, I'll get his uh, information, contact information. And in the meantime, we can work uh, if they please. Um, so we can um, Okay, so uh, I think I think there's a little connection issues. Um, can we go for question now? Yes, please. Yeah. So Nafiza, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll ask read first question and we'll give like a thirty second to answer. We can whoever can answer first, and we will take uh, his answer. So we, all the question actually from today's uh, discussion, uh, number one, reason for EKG or in Bangladesh we call ECG change and in liver cirrhosis patient. What is the reason for that? Okay, we'll see. Um, Nafiza, you just uh, keep an eye, 30 second. Any answer so far, no.
we'll take the answer if it is even close. So that's okay, you can answer. Yeah, I think it's probably a little tough. So the reason for change of EKG in liver cirrhosis patient because of it's called in uh, one word, um, hepatic cardiomyopathy. So that means this patient has a portal hypertension and then a lot of vasodilator um, secretion. We know that uh, like uh, nit uh, nitric oxide, uh, carbon monoxide. So those are vasodilator. And in response to that, there is increased sympathetic activity. So the uh, correct answer will be increased sympathetic activity. And we already discussed there's a lot of changes uh, in EKG prolongation of uh, QT and change variation of RR interval and also uh, T wave. So that the answer. So number two will go. Uh, can anybody answer number two quickly? Uh, AI aids to personalize of medicine follow guideline. Which one, A or B? You can just put A or B. So our goal in future to use AI for personalization of medicine versus follow the guideline. So you all know the guideline, uh, but guideline is uh, one to fit everybody, which is not possible all the time. So we want an individual approach. Nafiz, any answer? We got one answer, sir, from Sadia Apu. Oh, okay. She said A and B. Um, Dr. Sadia, try again. I, I want A or B. Which one our target in future? Just make it clear. With the help of AI, what is our goal? Absolutely, a correct answer. So um, Nafiza, you can take uh, Dr. Sadia's uh, answer A, which is correct. So we'll go to the next question. Uh, AI aided colonoscopy does not increase adenoma detection rate in routine clinical practice, true or false? Okay, Dr. Sadia and Sadia can be. So th this is a little bit of uh, variable because the beginning uh, study shows it help. The other study shows it is same, like uh, uh, doing with a gastroenterologist, same detection opposed to with the help of the AI. So I'll uh, take any answer you, you gave. So that should be fine. So we'll take that uh, from Dr. Sadia as well. So next question. Can we get treatment plan using chatbot true or false? Treatment plan with chat.
uh, Dr. Rihanna and Sir cannot, can I get plug? Yeah, that's true. So you cannot get accurate plan with the with the chat. So this chat, not basically by physician, we don't use that normally, is by regular people. So uh, like our patient. So they are asking all the questions. I show one slide. So you cannot get a complete uh, plan. Actually, plan has to be by us. Uh, that's kind of helping tool, but not complete plan. So but again, thank you both of you for answering and we'll go for the next one. I already answered actually number five, prolonged QT interval in cirrhotic patient due to what, for what? So you can write why prolonged QT interval in So by the way, what's the cause of the uh, common cause of the death in liver cirrhotic patients? So it's not directly actually liver cause. They die of something different, like cardiac complication, uh, infection. So both of you answer very smartly. Now, electrolyte imbalance and electric imbalance. So if I already mentioned that it happened, it's a lot of changes uh, happen in, in a liver cirrhotic patient. So what happened here, liver cirrhosis, you have portal hypertension, uh, you have vasodilator with the... Uh, 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 CO2 and all um, vasodilator. So, and then a compensation with sympathetic activity. So it's basically here, both uh, sympathetic activity and vasodilator is not directly, I mean, can be electrolyte imbalance because those patients has a lot of other issues. And they can be uh, hyponatremic, obviously hypokalemic, or uh, sometimes with the medication, if you start uh, a lecton or a spinal lecton, that can be hyperkalemic as well. So that may be secondary, but not the uh, primarily. So uh, anyway, I think more both of you, uh, we like to congratulate both of you. The price probably, let me see, we'll go to Dr. Sadia, right, uh, Nafisa? Yes, sir. Okay, so but we congratulate both, but we want both of you uh, involved with our future study, which is uh, um, AI. Uh, we like to do more study in Bangladesh, uh, on behalf of Planetary Health and with the help of Dr. Rahman. So both of you, if you're interested, uh, you can be, you can email to Dr. Rahman and then uh, we'll go from there. And uh, maybe we have a meeting in future only about this research topic. Uh, sir, may so, I? Uh, you can tell, uh, Nafisa or Dr. Sadia? Sir, it's Nafi, sir. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Sadia. You can share your chat box and your address and phone number to share with us. Let's get the price to you. Uh, okay, we'll finish. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Nafi, sir. Thank you so much. But uh, if, if you don't mind um, asking Rihanna uh, her address and send it to her, I will be really, really happy about that. I just, uh, uh, I just, I joined quite late. Uh, I'm a PhD radiology faculty 
Um, I just thought that no one is answering. That's why I was answering the quizzes. But thank you for giving the prize to Rihanna. She deserves it. Um, I am uh, actually chat uh, could be interesting topic. Unfortunately, I mean, call Shilam, she jana, I couldn't join because AI use has to be, you know, um, introduced in Bangladesh. I mean, drive put Shilam, I jana, I'm not going to be able to do it. Radiology, definitely, our monohai clinical management, AI should come. It will aid everyone. We, we can see more patients, we can take more decisions. AI, um, Javan question that Shilam, uh, can AI give a treatment plan? Actually, it cannot give a treatment and definitely um, help clinician uh, shorten mm -hmm. time and help us to not to miss stuff like, you know, uh, yeah. some even electrolyte imbalance. We, we sometimes overlook because we're tired, we're exhausted, we're looking after so many patients. Um, if it helps us to highlight that point that this patient has got cirrhosis, has got QTQRS prolongation, um, that may uh, trigger us to treat the patient properly. So these are examples, but definitely we have to progress with the you know, advancement of technology and we have to embrace AI. Um, eventually, it, it will be just helping us get be, uh, becoming better doctors. It's just the junior system. Uh, but thank you so much for your excellent presentation. I really enjoyed whatever part I could um, uh, I could join. But Ami Kub Kushi Hobo, Banglati Bully, Judy Ami Kunubabi help put the party. I'm a radiologist. I'm at Mass General Hospital. Um, uh, I'm really grateful. Thank you, Dr. Lloyd, for a response from Dr. Rahman. And maybe in future we can have a meeting, right, Dr. Rahman? Oh, definitely. And thank you. Um, um, nice um, to know you, that uh, uh, Dr. Sadia. And um, definitely, if you are interested, we can um, uh, another meeting and you can talk and talk about it but um like you know just choose one topic that you want to work on and uh, then I, I think that's the best idea yeah I, I think whatever you are doing now maybe we can be included on your uh, on your study research get more data and then come up with more ideas as well so yes, that's that is, you can... uh, triage triage means you know, uh, uh, I see uh, my wife is and she's an in internal medicine and she takes calls from four to uh, four to 10. They call it pager call. And she she received 33 phone call about, you know, blah, 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 different, you know, uh, this medicine, all medicine, pure medicine. And then she admitted 38 of them. So I asked her, you definitely used certain logic or something and why those phone call we can abolish those phone calls and maybe you can save some money there for the hospital as well. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll finish uh, very soon then. So Dr. Sadia, you can uh, give your email address in chat box, so I'll uh, forward it to Dr. Raman. Sure. Um, Thank you, Dr. Mr. Roman. Okay, uh, Professor Ashad, uh, we are. Assalamu alaikum, Ashad. Hi. From you. Wa alaikum assalam. Only thing for you, I'm not getting it. Ah, I'm only thing for you. Did you see? I'm just seeing the face. The camera, the camera, mono, chilo. Look, see, show it. Okay, thirty-fifth, not sixth. Who, who, who? Which? No, I'm thirty-seventh. 37, money, 37, money, Haider, Ali Haider, 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 uh, regarding artificial intelligence in Bangladesh, uh, we are actually lagging far behind. Recently, Fuzi Film tries tried to introduce artificial intelligence in um, upper GI and lower GI, 
but still they don't get permission here. But they are uh, trying to uh, uh, accommodate it within our arena, particularly in the, the standard society. They are visiting different hospitals and trying to uh, make it uh, commonest to the, our uh, faculty, but still we are lagging behind. Uh, it may be a good adjunct, particularly in case of uh, uh, diagnosing P malignant, malignant condition. It may be useful in follow up also. But uh, ultimately, uh, man is the behind the machine. Man behind the machine is very important so far as I think. So, thank you, Dr. Koshet, for your nice lecture. Thank you. Thank you, thank Ashley. You. So, we'll and nice see. to meet Rahman after a long time. <laughs> long time, yeah. You're sitting uh, out. Uh, <laughs> we'll be happy if we see you in February in Inshallah. PHA conference. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, Talia Mashishkur, we can thank you so much for everybody and we'll see you in next uh, lecture. Okay. Ashley, we'll talk much. to you more. We actually need more work with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are most welcome. We are eagerly waiting for your report and collaboration with CMC. All Absolutely. CMCM. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Sadia, we can stop here.